Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. We are at 1804 West Street, and that's someplace that everybody needs to get to and needs to put that address in their address book because we are here with the Classic Theater of Maryland with Sally Boyette, who is the founder and producing artistic director. And if I'm correct, the last time we spoke, I hope I got that title right, did I? Yes, you did. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Well, I'll tell you, we wanted to touch base with you because you are sort of wrapping up your current season. Uh, There is still a little bit of time to see The Servant of Two Masters, which is – playing through the end of August, I believe, at Reynolds Tavern, which is a fun a fun night out. It's just a rollicking good time. It's an hour and a half of sheer comic mayhem. Well, it, it's, you know, and the thing I love about that is that it is not, and not to diss theater, but it's not stuffy theater. I mean, you know, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting there, you're eating your burger, you're drinking your drink, and you're interacting, and everything is right around there. And it's a different experience when you think about theater. Um, which is it's wonderful, and that's you know one of the three arms that you offer. I mean, you've got actually four arms, I guess. You've got a cabaret, professionally produced plays and shows here in your facility at eighteen oh four, and then you work at the Gresham Estate too, which is your Shakespeare thing, which has uh, you know pretty much just ended, which is outdoor theater, a little less stuffy than the indoor theater because it's out in the open, but it's you're, you're seated and you've got a, a bar and you know, acts and everything else, which is really kind of neat because you cover every sort of angle of how you may want to experience theater in the, in the world, I guess. Well, we try to, we try to bring something for everyone and we try to bring theater to people who might be intimidated by seeing Shakespeare. It's a, it's a two hour, in our theater, it's a two hour commitment. Okay. And I typically cut our Shakespeare's to a very tight two hours. I think, I think you should be able to get your message across in two hours. Well, it's not like, what was it, Nicholas Nickleby? Wasn't that like a four-day? Well, yes, Wasn't that like yeah, a four-day? That, that's very special. <laughs> that's very unique. Um, but no, Shakespeare um, plays are long, and most uh, most directors do some cuts to them. Sure. Uh, there's also um, professional – Shakespeare is is paced at a, at a tighter clip. I, I, I would say that. I mean, it moves. It moves right on. Yes, um, and it needs to. And and they. It takes them ten lines to say what in in Shakespeare's verse what we could say in one sentence. True. So that you know the meaning of that is clear, but you have to keep the pace moving and move it, it right on. Yeah, and, and that's, that's all something that you guys do as you're producing this. I mean, you guys as you're putting this this production together. You're figuring it out where where it needs to go? Well, I typically go into a rehearsal when I'm directing with the cuts, with most of the cuts done. And then I find the places where the show might drag a little bit, and then I tighten those places up. And and everything that we do here at Classic Theater of Maryland, it's it's world-class theater. So it's got a Broadway pace. And as a Broadway performer myself, I know exactly what that pace is, and I know how to get it. And um, and that's what we strive for every time. So you always want the audience to be sitting on the edge of their seat, waiting for the next, not waiting for the next thing to happen, but the next thing just happens. Mm-hmm. And um, and there's never a dull moment. That there's never a dull moment where the scene is changing or between scenes or you know it's just constant movement, constant energy, from the time Act One starts to intermission, the time Act Two starts to the end of the play. Sounds like Sally Boyette doesn't have anything on the Google algorithm trying to figure out keeping the pace and keeping everybody on the edge of their seat. I had a professor in college that was the ex-wife of Sean Connery. She told us she said that when. Uh, Ian Fleming died. He said James Bond had to die. Uh, and they negotiated with his estate and said that you had to use – I mean he had an algorithm. He had a formula. He said that within – and I think it was like every 90 seconds there had to be sex, violence, or innuendo. And it's hysterical. If you go to see a James Bond movie today, you can go 88, 89, and boom, he's getting shot at. Well, I, I think great theater and especially great Shakespeare has a musical score underneath and I'm also, as a musician, I can feel that 
score. I can feel that pace. And it's just like you're con- you're conducting it. You're con- the director is conducting that that piece. And there are moments that need to really move. There are moments where you can slow it down a little bit. There are moments where it's 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 a big bold sound. And there are times where it's very gentle and very delicate. And um, it, it's it's just like a, a big orchestral piece. It, that's why it stood the test of time for the past 400 years, and we're still doing it. And and what we do here is we, uh, with most of our productions, we're reinterpreting the classics, and we're trying to put a look at them through a more modern lens. Sometimes that lens might be the 18th century. Sometimes that lens is the 21st century. It just really depends on the piece and the inspiration of the director. And, um, you know, the entire concept that comes together. We've got a new season coming up and that starts uh, in like September, October-ish? Yes. Yeah. We we go into rehearsals in September and the first production opens October 7th. Okay. So what's on tap for 22, 20 slash 23? Well, we're very excited and this is actually our 10th anniversary season. Outstanding. Yes. And Actually, it, I probably should stand up and do it. Thank you. <laughs> Standing out. It just kind of crept up on us, you know, and, and I feel like we lost two years because of COVID. Right. But uh, but we're here. We're at 10 years. We've survived 10 years. And for a new uh, regional arts in- institution, that's a big milestone. What productions are you looking at for next season? Do you We're know? excited. We have a 12th night. So that's Shakespeare's 12th night. It's Music a, be the food of love. Play, play on. on. <laughs> and it's a, it's a terrific comedy. Um, I'm, I've re-envisioned it in 1920s Hollywood. Oh, fun. And uh, so there will be a lot of uh, – we're, we're working with film and projections as well in, in this piece, which is something we do now. And then we have uh, Irving Berlin's White Christmas, the Broadway musical. We're very excited to bring that to Annapolis. And that opens Thanksgiving weekend, so November 25th. And we're running that in rotating performances with our own original Christmas Carol. Okay. And, and that, that's the one you guys have taken a totally remake of that or, or re- reimagining of. Yes. we uh, Donald Hicken and I adapted uh, Dickens' novella. And it's it's a it's a wonderful production. We really enjoy it. We've been running it now for six years, and it's very popular at Christmas. So we've got those two shows, White Christmas and A Christmas Carol, running in rotating performances. And uh, then in February, we open The Learned Ladies, which is a great Moliere piece, and Donald Hicken, who is a Helen Hayes Award winning director and a Tony Award nominee, will be directing The Learned Ladies. And uh, then we're doing the Thornton Wilder American classic, Our Town, and that is opening April 7th. And each one of these productions runs for four or five weekends, Okay. typically. And then we have our, our annual production. We call it the Comedy in the Courtyard. That's outdoors at Reynolds Tavern from May 16th through the end of August on a Tuesday evening at 7.30, and that is The Liar. So, so Pierre Cornet's The Liar. Well, you've been doing Reynolds Tavern for, what, five, six years now? Ten years. Uh, has that all been all ten? Yes. Yeah, this will be this will be ten years at Reynolds. Oh, time is flying. I'm not even sure that Reynolds was, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, was Reynolds around 10 years ago? But now I'm realizing that I'm yes. getting so much older. <laughs> Reynolds has been around for a very long time. Um, and then we have Shakespeare's The Tempest, which closes out the season. So we're bookending our season with Shakespeare. Um, we have, uh, the Tempest runs July 6th through the 23rd, and that's at the Gresham Estate, which is our new home for outdoor Shakespeare. And that's beautiful. We were there last year, and that's a, a piece of property that the county owns that they're in the process of, I don't say renovating it because it's beautiful as it is, but I mean the house needs some work and, and, and whatnot. And it's a, it's a great local – I mean you've got a little place for the bar. The you know It's a sloping lawn down to the stage with the chairs. There's shade, plenty of parking. Uh, the only downside is it's a hidden entrance. I went by it twice before I – Well, know. that's part of what will be updated. The The plan is to turn it into an arts park for the county. And, and our big goal is to make uh, our outdoor Shakespeare experience there free every summer. So oh, that that would be cool. That's the goal. We just, we just need um, to be a little bit bigger as a company. We need some sponsors 
Because hear, hear that? Cool. Anybody that's listening, they need some <laughs> sponsors, okay? ClassicTheaterMaryland.org. <laughs> yes. Well, we are, uh, we are Anne Arundel County's only year-round professional theater company. Well, I want, I want to talk about this, okay? You have used the terms several times, both when we've spoken offline and online and everything else about professional theater company, and we've had some discussions about that. And I was reading a piece that Rick Hutzel wrote this morning in his uh, Meanwhile in Annapolis, and he was talking about pies, uh, and is Annapolis a pie town? And uh, I know Sally's looking with her like deer in the headlight eyes at me, and we're going like, okay, where's this going? But I like and, pie. And yeah, no, I, I do too. But it was what it got down to is talking about the different types of pies and everything else. And, and I, I, it dawned on me that what the difference between you and you know some of the other options that you may have in town that may not be professional. Okay, we talk about community theater. We talk about the. Um, is, is is like pies, okay? I can go into the Giant and buy a Mrs. Smith's. Does she make – I think she makes the pie, the frozen pies, okay? And they're great. You know, I, I, I enjoy that Mrs. Smith's pie, and I, I'll eat it, and I'll enjoy it and everything else. But you know what? I can go to the farmer's market and get one that was fresh baked a day ago, and there is no – no comparison between the two. I would never turn around and say uh, this fresh baked pie at the farmer's market is the same as this frozen pie that I got. I mean, they're both good in their own way, but the fresh baked pie is just heads and tails above where you're gotten. I mean, it's, you know, is that somewhat of an adequate analogy to professional theater? Well, I would say that um, professional theater, when it's done well, which is what we pride ourselves on doing here at Classic Theater of Maryland, because we have the leadership and the artistic collaboration with broad folks with Broadway national tour, international tour, and London's West End experience. And that's unique in the region. And um, we know how to make world-class theater. We've done world-class theater ourselves. And what we bring together when we, you know, put all these people in a room is something that cannot be compared with anything around here. And that that isn't to say that you shouldn't go and frequent your friends in the community theater, but it's saying it's a different experience. When you go see a Broadway show, you're getting an experience. True. It's an event. And you're looking forward to that event because you know that there's going to be a certain level of quality and a level of aesthetic that is unparalleled anywhere else. And that's, that's the analogy that we bring here. Every show we produce is better than the one before. Our company, which started as a baby company 10 years ago with $5,000 in the basement of a building on Chinkapin Round Road, is now over $600,000 annual you know, that, that is now our operating budget, which is still tiny for a regional theater company. But it shows the growth that we've had in 10 years. And we did have setbacks due to COVID, but we're, we're digging out and we're going to make it work. But this is a very unique experience. Every artist who works in this theater is a professional artist. The designers are professional. The creative team is professional. And these are people who have devoted their lives to doing this for a living, and there's no comparison with your next door neighbor who's wonderfully talented and maybe a, a, a great, great actor or a great carpenter to do. a. Yeah, a, you a can set. you can you can go see a hobbyist or you can go see someone who's a real pro. And that's what we have here. We have real pros. We have people from New York, which, you know, there there's a there's a certain uh, allure about being from New York or having performed on Broadway and Broadway national tours. And that's what we bring here. And, and that cannot be duplicated. You cannot duplicate that if you haven't done it. I, I agree. And I was here during Cabaret, which was your last, last season or beginning of the season, last season, last season, right? It Begin- was in early, February early, this Earlier year. in the season. Earlier was, this year, yes. It was, um, and, you know, it was, as, as you said, it was a palpable experience in the theater, uh, it was different. It was uh, you – the expectation. I mean just the the way you've set up your building, you know, to, it is set up as a professional theater. Uh, there is a bar in the remote room. There is the, the hallway. The You've got the ushers. You've got the seating, which is – by the way, it's just absolutely wonderful the way your theater is set up. And it's got, what, 150? 125. 125 seats. So it is small, but it's mighty. 
uh, not a bad seat in the house, um, whether you're you know on the on the side seats or the center seats. Uh, they're both great seats for the the stage, and you could feel it in the in the audience that was there. I know uh, former Mayor Ellen Moyer was there on celebrating her birthday with you guys, and uh, it, it was it was just great, you know, to to be able to feel that. And it was it, the, the level of acting you could tell. Um, you know, these guys weren't wrapping up and, you know, heading across the street to Taco Bell to get a, a you know, a, a, a chalupka and then go to the local bar and celebrate another good, good show. They were Monday morning quarterbacking, I'm sure, saying, OK, well, here's where we we messed up. But they don't know that because they don't know what the plan is. But, you know, and, and figuring out how to make it better. Um, for the next show, for the next, you know, as, as you say you do, for the next production, we want to make sure that we get better and better as we go on. And you, and you could so tell that the folks that were the actors were, this was it. This was it for them. This was their careers, um, which does indeed set it apart differently from, you know, any, anything else that we have here in town. Um, you know, now you're, you said you mentioned your actors are coming from, you know, New York or from other places. And uh, before we started recording, you had said that even prior to COVID, just with the amount of actors that are out there and the limited number of productions that are out there, uh, that, you know, that's why, you know, the old cliche, it's like, well, they're, they're waiters and they're you know, servers and everything else. Uh, so, I mean, these folks are coming from pretty much all over the world to bring a production here to Annapolis. That's true. We have we have uh, depending on the show and depending on the um, number of characters and roles available in that production, and depending on the needs of the design team, uh, we may have up to fifty percent of our company coming from New York for any one given production. Uh, but we do have a core team of professionals here in the Washington region. And they make up the core team of every production. So whether they're cast or the technical crew, our stage managers, and also some of our designers are here from show to show. So we do have a resident company of actors, multi-generational actors, which I'm very thrilled about. We have some young, up-and-coming, terrific talent. And we have some um, actors and actresses who have who've done you know they've done the big time in LA they've done the touring circuit and now they've kind of settled back in this area and they just want to do great theater and that's why they work with us that's 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 interesting you said you said the shows that typically run you know four to five weekends um how long do you rehearse for before you pull the curtain back on the first night uh two and a half to three and a half weeks okay so we're talking probably six to seven weeks or where do these guys stay? We put them up in actor housing. Sometimes they stay with uh, patrons who donate rooms or garage apartments or guest houses, things like that. Oh, neat. And, or we put them at uh, longer term, you know, kind of hotel facilities okay. with kitchens. Okay, interesting. So they come down here and they're, oh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're here working. Yeah, they're here working. That's and, been- and hopefully we we book them for more than one show. So there's there's always an overlap in our season. One show opens and then the, the second show starts Starting rehearsing. Yes, and so they kind of they kind of uh, you know piggyback onto each other. And then when we get to the the um, the holiday rep, we're running those and rehearsing those at the same time. That would blow my mind. That's why I'm not in this business here. I mean, I, I, can, I can sit here and see that, okay, you know, I'm jumping up there for cabaret and I get up and start going with the Shakespeare or something like that. I get them confused. Yes, yeah, surprisingly, you, you know, everything, you keep everything straight. I mean, there was, a, there was a time when I first started directing multiple shows at once. Now it, it feels like nothing to direct seven plays in a year um, in 12 cabarets. But when I first started doing this about 10 years ago, I would come into a room and say to the stage manager, what show are we doing today? (laughs) I'm not, where am I? Sally's got her teleprompter up there. (laughs) But, uh, no, it's, you know, it's, it's a muscle and you develop that muscle. And, um, and I'd say it's the same, it's the same for the actors. Um, I mean, I did one Broadway production for seven years. And all over the world. And well, that's, that's like getting up in the morning and putting your pants on. I mean, at, at, at the end of that, I would imagine. 
It it is, but there's there's there are always different things that happen. There are always new cast members coming in. There there's always a way to change it up. You might get to a city and part of the proscenium doesn't fit, so they they move it into a slightly different place, and things are just a little different. So you have to be you have to be on the ball with that. And I've I've been a swing once in Forty um, Second Street, and uh, that production was there were 18 tracks for the women in money. Yeah. So I had to swing 18 tracks oh, tap wow. dancing with the giant dimes and <laughs> it becomes it becomes mathematical after a while. Interesting. You trust the technique because that's there. You've trained for 157 years. You know what you're doing, but it's just where you're standing at any given moment. You know, the exact coordinates on the stage and the path that you're taking is uh, is something you just you know you just have to look at a book before you go out. You look at the diagram and you go out there and do it. Do it. And then the next day it's something completely different, or the evening show is something completely different. Wow, wow, interesting. And, and people make an entire career of being swings on Broadway, and they just cover anywhere from a couple to an entire ensemble. We're we're fortunate in Annapolis. I mean, we are a rich arts community um you know we've got a symphony we've got an opera we've got a ballet we have professional theater we have a chorale we've got you know we've got any number of different art you know we've got maryland hall which has all the different galleries and classes and everything else and you know professional theater is in this region we'll say outside of annapolis is pretty much limited to like washington and baltimore i would think to a degree um, I mean, obviously, so the, the city centric. I mean, you know, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, maybe Wilmington probably has something, I would mm-hmm. think. Uh, and you jump up into New York then at that point. Uh, I mean, do you compete with those other markets for talent? We compete with the D.C. market and the Baltimore market for, for some of the talent. Um, there's a wide range of talent in, in the D.C. market. Um, you've got tiny theaters that are just getting started. Um, and we're all, we're, that's like you guys 10 years ago. That's like (laughs) us. Yeah. And you know, where their, uh, you know, their budgets are very low as, as they have to be when you're getting started and you're paying your actors a stipend. Um, but you still have actors from the region who may be excited about the work that you're doing, or they may be friends who are getting together after they graduate, something like that. Um, and you've got, you've got that scale all the way up to the big, major regional institutions that have been around for years and years. And I mean, decades and, right. and heavily funded. And so we're, you know, we're, we're on that trajectory to be a major regional arts institution here in Annapolis, which is amazing because our county has never had a major regional theater company never? until, until us. No, really. I mean, how did you end up here? And how did you figure well, out that we needed this? Well, I, I ended up here just through a through family circumstances. I lived in New York for many years, over twenty years, and and worked there, and and traveled the country and internationally with Broadway shows. And um, I took a semi retirement. I say semi retirement because clearly I'm not retired. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got married and and had kids, and they'll do that to you. Damn I took a break, uh, <laughs> and um, but then we ended up in this area about 14 years ago, and I, I looked around, and I'd always been, even when I was retired from performing, I was teaching at professional ballet companies because my background was also as a professional ballet dancer. I trained at New York City Ballet and Joffrey Ballet. And so I was teaching at professional companies in the New York area, and I came out here, and I started teaching at Ballet Theater of Maryland almost immediately, right after I took one class. They asked me to teach. Um, because when you're in that the ballet world, the training is obvious, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you've had world-class training. And, um, but then I looked around for theater, and there wasn't a theater uh, and not not a theater of the uh, of the caliber that I had done and that I wanted to do, and um, and I started the company actually as an educational company in the very beginning. I didn't have the I didn't have the vision to immediately start a theater company. Interesting. But it became obvious after about two years that um, that I could serve the region 
more thoroughly as an artist if I founded a professional theater company with an educational mission. Okay. And we are one of the largest arts providers to Anne Arundel County Public Schools and the school, the surrounding schools. And we do student matinees of all of our performances. We have kids come here for workshops, matinees. We have an after school and Saturday education program that we offer acting for the camera, acting for the stage, movement, fencing, stage combat. It's a great program. And we also have scholarships for kids who otherwise couldn't afford to do this training. And we guarantee those scholarships as long as the kids come back, we guarantee them through their high school graduation. Wow. I mean, that was one of the things I wanted to discuss about what, you know, what don't we know about classic theater of Maryland? And uh, I mean, the whole education aspect of that. I mean, so if I'm looking to do, you know, character acting for old people or something like that, that's something that you, you might you might have. Yeah. I mean, I think if if there's an interest from the community, we could certainly program it. So send us your interest. And what we can offer is we can offer the world-class training, the conservatory training. We have the experienced professional actors who are also world-class teaching artists. And we have a voice and dialect coach who is one of the top five LESAC master teachers in the world. And she's on our staff and also in our productions. Oh, very cool. She must be fun at parties. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she and I are very close friends. <laughs> uh, that, that's but wonderful. I do have to watch my consonant endings because she'll listen and she'll say, Sally, it's not Hamlet. It's Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a friend like that, yes, right? Absolutely. Of course. As far as supporting Classic Theater of Maryland um, and seeing the productions, uh, we can obviously come into the box office and buy a ticket and, and have a seat, uh, whether it be outside in the field at Gresham's or in the cabaret here. Or Oh, we didn't talk about the cabaret. This is a separate room that you have, which is where the bar is for the main theater uh, at your office. And this is a monthly – Uh, There's no other way to describe it, but a monthly cabaret that you guys put on every year, right? Yes. And people would be surprised when they come in and they see a a two-hour performance. It's costumed, choreographed, themed. We have uh, four to eight professional vocalists, Broadway guest artists, regional jazz vocalists. Um, Some recent guest artists were Angie Schwar from Broadway's The Prom, Devin Hadsel from Broadway's Mean Girls. She's also doing some Like It Hot that's opening on Broadway in September. Ian Knauer from Broadway's Anastasia was here recently, and he's coming back in December. Um, Devin's coming back in January, and Angie will be back. She and I have done five big shows together, and, and we're old friends. Um, And then we have had a terrific jazz vocalist from the Army Field Band, uh, Sarah Polinsky. And so we've got these great um, guests who come in. And then we have a core group. And we, uh, accompanying us, are the Unified Jazz Ensemble. And they're wonderful. They're great. They're terrific. We've been working together for a couple of years now. And we really have a great show. So we put on this two-hour show that we rehearse once, everybody comes together, the band gets together, we do a quick sound check rehearsal, and the audience comes in, and we can seat 75 in this amazing cabaret room. Well, how frequently frequently do you do the cabarets? They're monthly. And people are astonished that that one show only runs once, and then... We do another one. Okay, so it's not a weekend. It's just one. It's just one performance. And those have typically been on Sunday nights. Our our next one is August 7th. That's a great way to kick off the the week. (laughs) It is. And but we're moving them to Monday nights. So they'll be once a month on a Monday night. And we've got an entire schedule. Everything is we we have flyers. You can stop by the theater in the in, in the front and grab one. But we also have everything on our website at classictheatermaryland.org. And you can see everything that we're doing. We do over 170 live professional performances every year. That's like one every other day in a couple hours. Yes, it's a lot. We produce them. We do. There, there are. We produce, direct, costume, the whole nine yards, all of these, and bring in all the artists. But that's a lot of artists. That's over a hundred. We're employing over a hundred artists a year. 
and and some of them are doing multiple shows, back to back shows, and as we grow, we're able to just raise the wages for artists and have have them give them an artistic home where they know the quality of the work is going to be great. They know that everything they do here is going to be world-class theater. Right. Well, for, well gosh, for I didn't realize that you've had that many productions over a year. I mean, that's, you know, for visitors that are in town that are staying for a week, there's a better than not chance that there is a classic theater of Maryland production going on when they're here, whether it be the cabaret on Monday night this year or whether it be out at the Gresham or at Reynolds Tavern, which is convenient to downtown or right here at the uh, at the theater on West Street. That's pretty that's pretty wild. Now, that last year, I know that you did. Um, they were all themed by um, decades. decades. Yes. Is that going to be a similar theme this year or? Yes, we're going to do that. Um, we go from the 20s through the 80s because I think that there's no good music after the 1980s, so we kind of stop there. <laughs> There's no bias here at all? There's no bias here. And I might be dating myself just a little bit. Um, but you can really go anywhere for you know more current music. And, and we're doing the classics here at Classic Theater of Maryland. So whether it's jazz, classic jazz, classic music theater, uh, Shakespeare, the classics. It's any work that has stood the test of time. American jazz standards have stood the test of time. Sure. We're still singing songs today. Um, you know, Tony Bennett and La- Lady Gaga mm-hmm. are singing songs today that were written in the 1920s and 1930s. And it, it really is how you style and orchestrate the songs that keep them current and relevant. Once a month. Once a month, you can get your fill. It's a great evening. We have, we actually have, if you subscribe to our main stage season, you can get half price tickets to the entire cabaret season. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's talk about this. This is a great way to support Classic Theater of Maryland. Okay, you've got subscriptions. Uh, again, we can come in, we can bring a group of friends and buy group tickets, I'm sure. We can come in and buy an individual ticket just for me because I'm lonely and have nothing better to do on a Friday or a Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night. But subscriptions are probably the way to go because, I mean, you probably, you know, you, you know where you're going to be sitting. You know, you know, pretty much everything. In you seats. can choose your seats. You can sit in the same seats every time or you can mix it up. There's no fee to change. You can just call us and say there's a concierge service for the box office for subscribers. And you can just call or email and say, oh, I want to move my tickets here. I want to move up to the third row and add five seats because my, you know, somebody's coming in town. And there's a lot of flexibility okay, with, that's really with cool. subscriptions. And it's also the best way to support the theater. Well, I think it's the best way to support any arts or, or entity. Is, I mean, you know, if you, if, if you are passionate about it and you enjoy it and you, you appreciate the talent and the work and the effort that goes into it, um, you, you definitely, definitely want to do that. And as you said, you can get subscriptions to the main theater. Um, does that include the Gresham Yes. So you can get a you can get a seven show subscription that covers all the shows. We also offer a five show flex where you can just choose five. And and that's good for people who might be out of town for the summer or out Snowbirds of town. Snowbirds or whatever. or out of town for the winter, exactly. And um and then there's also the cabaret series as an add on or as an as a six show subscription to the cabaret. Now we do twelve of them. Uh, but we do offer a flexible package for the cabarets. And, uh, and again, we offer the discount. So they're all discounted. So the subscriptions, the center seats, it's a 20% discount. That's significant. It is significant. And then there's a 50% discount on the cabaret tickets. And people love it. Uh, we, have, we have subscribers who come to every single cabaret, and they sit in the same seats. And it's really nice. It's like an old jazz club. Uh, the the room has been completely redone. There's a stage. There's there are lights and a really nice bar. We have a lot of themed drinks and um, just a, it's a full bar. We have little cabaret tables with nice tablecloths and little lights. And um, you can sit at a two top table. You can sit at a larger table if you have a larger party. We have high top tables. Cigar. You allowed to smoke cigars here? No, you can't no. smoke cigars here. It's <laughs> the only thing I kind of miss out, 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 out of a jazz club. Maybe one day we'll have an outdoor cabaret venue and we'll have a cigar section. 
That would be funny. Well, again, all of the information, Classic Theater of Maryland. Again, all the information, classictheatermaryland.org. And theater, I don't, do you have the domain with T H E A T E R or is it? I know you're, it's R E. Well, we have both um, just because it was because recommended the, that we do that. Okay. Um, but yes, we're, we're spelling theater with R E. R E, the fancy way. Yes, the British way. Well, I'm half English, which most people don't know. Like, were you, like, you, your par- you have parents that are from? Yes, my mom is English. She's from London. Oh, okay. And my dad's American. Okay. And so I come by, I come by the, the classic theater and the Shakespeare naturally. Interesting. Now, were you born in London or were you or in the UK or were you? I was born at an Air Force base. Oh, you were one of those yes. Air Force brats. Yes. Why do they call them brats? I don't know. We talked a little bit about the passion that's involved in, in this. And I mean, it's it's not a passion for a job, as we mentioned. It's a passion for a lifestyle. And that really does translate um, whether you're here at the cabaret, uh, looking at the singers that are you know putting it all out there for one show a month or whether it's in the theater Main theater here uh, at 1804 West Street or out at the Gresham or actually on the patio at, uh, at Reynolds Tavern in downtown Annapolis. And these folks are, are, are living their lives. I mean, they're not going to, uh, you know, work at the Pentagon on Monday. They're coming back here on Monday to, to do it better for you on Friday uh, or Saturday or when, you know, whenever you're coming to the show. Education. I mean, I didn't realize that you've got you know, such your your tentacles into uh, the education world. So, the you know, for kids that are into arts and acting and voicing and, and everything else, this is this is a great resource to come to. Uh, we also go into schools, and we we can teach the Shakespeare units in schools. Um, I've been for a couple of years training the Anne Arundel County middle school teachers to teach Romeo and Juliet oh, in the classroom. Very interesting. Um, do you rent this place out? We do. We do. We rent the cabaret room for private parties. We uh, we rent the theater to a church on Sunday mornings. Oh, okay. And we've got different people who might use it for uh, competitions or private events, meetings. Yeah, I would, I would think like a corporate meeting. For award a- shows, yes. Um, and even it's a great place to – to do a video. Uh, we've got a young woman who's a singer songwriter and she rents the space every six months or so to uh, record a new video. And then we've got three studios. We've got a, a studio with a dance floor and mirrors and we've got a, a, a vocal studio with a piano and a carpeted floor. And then we've got a film studio. And all those are rentable? Yes. Volunteers? Do you need volunteers? We always need volunteers and we love volunteers for ushering and uh, for occasionally, um, we do have a volunteer bartender. Okay. And um, but uh, some a lot of our bartenders are are professional, or you know, they're staff members right. who are who right. are who are moonlighting as our bartenders. Um, but mainly for ushers, and it's a greeters. It, it's a great way to see a lot of great theater and also rub elbows with some terrific talent. And great neighbors. And great neighbors yeah. as well. And we have, um, don't forget to mention, the plenty of free parking right in front of our theater. Oh, that's right. Because you're, you're at, I mean, you are, you do share your, your building and your space with, but they're all day use. Yes, that's right. And so we have the entire parking lot. It's great. You park your car, you walk right in. And from the time you park your car and walk in to the time you leave, it's, it's just a terrific experience. It is. And now it's right at the corner of sort of Admiral and West Street, right in that kind of area, kind of where the Audi and the Taco Bell. And, mm-hmm. uh, right rest, across from Audi. Rest in peace, the whiskey <laughs> <laughs> that, that is there. You are a nonprofit as well. We are. So your donations, which I'm assuming you do take? Oh, of course. <laughs> so, so, we are uh, a 501c3 nonprofit, and we couldn't do what we do without our donors. Okay, so again, Classic Theater of Maryland is where you would want to go to check out all of that. I mean, if you are a business that is looking to sponsor or donate, this is a great audience to get to. Um, it is. We have a we have a sponsorship package. We have an advertiser package. Um, there are different levels of sponsorship, and individuals. You know, sometimes people might think, well, I don't, I don't know that I can really make a difference. I only have $300. And well, you could sponsor a child to take a fencing class. 
every know, semester, and you could be responsible for that you know, child who could not afford to take that class. You can be responsible for them getting that education, getting that training, not so they can grow up to be a world-class fencer, even though we do have an Olympic fencer instructing the class. Oh, very cool. Um, from the Naval Academy, um, CAS Camp. Uh, but it's the it's the the rigor and the discipline and the confidence that's built in all of these professional conservatory level arts classes. Classic Theater Maryland dot org is where you want to go. Did we forget anything? But donate, subscribe, and if you're on the fence about subscribing, my recommendation is to pick out a show, whether it be a cabaret or a main theater show. Come see it once, and if you're not hooked. I'll buy you a drink somewhere because uh, I think I, you know, you know, a lot of times you've got to you've got to see it to believe it, and uh, you know, once you come in here, you will see that there is a difference between community theater and professional theater, and uh, certainly not to the detriment of any of the wonderful community theaters that we do have in the area. Uh, but it is night and day uh, on, on what you have, and you can see that in the. You know, in the actors that are that are on stage, you can see that in the uh, management that's running around uh, and everything that's been put into it. So it's uh, it's a wonderful experience, and that offer stands. Come see it. If you think it's stunk, you let me know, and uh, I'll buy you a beer if you're not hooked. Classic Theater of Maryland. Did we forget anything else, Sally? No, I think just you know, come see the show. That is that's the number one comment we get uh, from folks is. We just, we had no idea. It was just amazing. Classic Theater Maryland for education, for rentals, certainly for productions, plays, cabarets, volunteer, donate, sponsor. There's plenty of ways to get involved. But uh, if nothing else, just come on out and definitely see a show. Thank you so much to Sally Boyette, who's the founder and producing artistic director. Oh, I did miss one thing. We are auditioning kids for Christmas Carol. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that'll be going out soon. What's the age group? Oh, I would say it's about 10 to 14. Okay. Great. So anybody that's interested in Christmas Carol, and that's opening up thank, the weekend after Thanksgiving, you said? Uh, it'll, it goes into rehearsal the end of October or during the middle of October, and it'll open the first week of December. And then run through? Run through Christmas Eve. Awesome. Get involved. If you've got a kid that's in it, there you go. ClassicTheaterMaryland.org. Again, thanks so much, Sally. Thank you, John. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.